Welcome back to Respiratory HQ. I'm Tanya Peel, and today we really, really need to talk about the difference between ventilation and oxygenation. Because as a respiratory therapist, this is gonna be absolutely critical to be able to decide if your patient is ventilating well or oxygenating well. It starts out with patient assessment, it goes into oxygen therapy, you're gonna use this with mechanical ventilation. It's such a critical area and we need to understand it. But let's just look at it very simplistically. When we say ventilation, we are talking about the removal of CO2. So as the blood comes back to the right side of the heart and gets pumped into the lung, it is the movement of the CO2 across the AC membrane into the alveoli to be exhaled out into the atmosphere. While oxygenation is the delivery of oxygen. When we breathe in, we're bringing in oxygen from the room air down to our alveoli. It'll cross the AC membrane, be picked up by the, by the bloodstream and transported to the tissues. So ventilation is a CO2 removal. Oxygenation means oxygen delivery. These are two separate things. All right, let's talk a little bit more about CO2 removal. You remove CO2 by breathing, okay? But we can break that down into a mathematical formula. It's always about math, isn't it? So when we talk about ventilation, we move minute volume. That's how CO2 is removed from our bloodstream. That is actually a combination of tidal volume and respiratory rate, okay? So CO2 removal requires that our patient have adequate minute volume, meaning an adequate tidal volume and an adequate respiratory rate. And we can assess if that's happening adequately by looking at the PaCO2 on the blood gas in conjunction with the pH. So as long as the CO2 in a person with no underlying lung disease is between 35 and 45 and the pH is between 7.35 and 7.45, we say our patient is ventilating adequately. Now, without sticking the patient, if we put an in-tidal CO2 monitor on them, we can also look at that in-tidal CO2 because all things being normal, it will correlate with the PaCO2. But this really just tells us adequacy of ventilation. We can look deeper and see how efficiently CO2 is being removed by looking at physiologic dead space. Okay, we say this a lot of different ways, right? So this formula, VD to VT, um, is, is it, the, the formal name is physiologic dead space. We call it VD to VT ratio, dead space ventilation. But basically, when you do the formula for this, and we're not gonna talk about math, this physiologic dead space will calculate out into a percentage. So let's say if our a patient's physiologic dead space is 75%, what that means is 75% of the tidal volume is not removing CO2. All right, so this is a very effective formula to tell us how efficiently our tidal volume is removing CO2 from our bloodstream, all right? When we look at oxygenation, if we wanted to see how adequate our patient is oxygenating, we're gonna get a blood gas and we're looking at the PaO2. Now again, if we don't wanna stick the patient to look at the, the PaO2, we can put a pulse ox on them and look at the SpO2 or um, we can get the SAO2 also from a blood gas. So these two things can be used to assess how adequately a person is oxygenating. But there are ways to look at how efficiently oxygenation is happening at the AC membrane. And those ways are gonna be your A to A difference so if you hadn't had a chance to look at the video, I talk about A to A difference and what it means when that, that difference is increasing versus decreasing. But as that A to A difference increases, that means the lungs are less efficient at the trans, or diffusion of, of O2 across the AC membrane. Then we come down to physiologic shunt, QS to QT. 
All right. Again, this formula, when you do the math, this formula is going to come out as a percentage. So let's say if a person had 25, 25%, what that means is 25% of the cardiac output is unoxygenated. And that's a bad, that's a bad thing to happen. So physiologic shunt also tells us about oxygenation as well as the PF ratio. This is the PaO2 compared to the FiO2. And again, it gives us um, an idea of how efficiently oxygen is diffusing across the lung. So there are other things to look at to assess both of these, but these are the common ones that the MBRC is going to ask you about. So at a glance, if you can separate these things right now in your mind, ventilation being CO2 removal, we assess it with PaCO2 in conjunction with pH, in tidal CO2 in conjunction with pH, and physiologic dead space. Physiologic dead space is the percentage of tidal volume that does not participate in the removal of CO2. When we're looking at oxygenation, we can look at the PA2, the pulse ox saturation, or the blood gas saturation. We can also look at A to A difference, physiologic shunt, and again, when we're talking about physiologic shunt, that is the percentage of cardiac output that is not oxygenated, and the PF ratio. These two categories are separate. They don't relate to each other. Learn them separately because if you do, when it comes down to taking the board exams, it's very, very easy to determine if your patient has a ventilation or an oxygenation problem. So if you want to learn how this can be used across many different, um, uh, many different lectures, come find me at Respiratory HQ.